If they aren't already, Navy should be using Tesla turbines for direct propulsion as stealth trolling motors and auxiliary power units to power onboard electronics. When the Tesla turbine, or tester for short, is designed correctly, it has no windage or almost zero turbulent losses between the discs. Tesla himself even believes so. Such a prime mover possesses many advantages, both constructive and operative. It is simple, light, compact, subject to a bit little wear, and exceptionally easy to manufacture as small clearances and accurate milling work are not essential to good performance. In operation, it is is reliable, there being no valves, sliding contacts, or troublesome veins. It is almost free of windage, largely independent of nozzle efficiency, and suitable for high as well as for low fluid velocities and speeds of revolution. Wow, that all sounds amazing, doesn't it? But what does that mean? What exactly is windage anyways? Windage refers to the flow losses created as a fluid moves over the surface of an object. In the case of a traditional bladed turbine, as the blades spin at high rotor tip speeds, it disrupts the surrounding fluid flow, leading to turbulent vortices forming at the tips of the blades. These turbulent vortices have multiple adverse effects. They reduce efficiency, cause vibration, and produce noise. Turbulence at the blade tips equates to lost kinetic energy, diminishing the efficiency of the turbine. The whirling vortices can cause the turbine parts to violently vibrate, which puts additional wear and tear on the system. These vibrations further propagate out as sound waves. This means windage causes a high level of operational noise, which is not ideal for stealth submarines that rely on being undetectable. Think about the iconic high-pitched whine of a bladed turbojet when the rotors are spinning at high RPM. Every blade tip essentially gives off a little flapping noise. Extensive and expensive CFD modeling is done to reduce these windage losses, but it's never perfect. Some drone thrusters, in fact, choose a high blade number count and a high RPM so that the flapping frequency coming off the thruster is higher than the human hearing. But while that's a neat trick for hiding the sound from our human ears, it doesn't get rid of the sound for robot ears that can listen in a full broadband spectrum. Even more in the optical spectrums, there are minor EM field variations from each blade tip that could potentially be detected by enemy vessels if the active EM shielding that military naval vessels use falters or outright fails. In contrast, the uniform shape of the flat and thin discs in the tester has no external geometry to give off acoustic or EM field oscillations or variations as it rotates. The tester further minimizes these problems by leveraging the principles of laminar flow. Laminar flow is a fluid flow regime characterized and governed by viscous forces within the fluid, as opposed to turbulent or chaotic flow regimes characterized and governed by the fluid's kinetic energies and momentum. In laminar flow regimes, fluids move in parallel layers with minimal mixing, which generates dramatically less sound sound as well as mechanical vibrations. A key factor in achieving this laminar flow lies in the spacing between the turbine's discs. Like in a laminar flow nozzle that uses many straws to straighten and align the bulk flow direction of the fluid, the thin parallel disc spacing similarly straighten the bulk flow of the fluid through the turbine as well as eliminate any turbulence or eddies between the disc faces. Even more so, the tester disc stack itself can act like an acoustic baffle for any fluid turbulence in the nozzle, which all bladed turbines coincidentally suffer from in their stationary or stator blades too. With these benefits in mind, it's easy to see why I believe the tester could be the quietest turbine ever devised. But wait, there's more! <laughs> Here's the kicker. You may have heard of supercritical fluids, but not know what they are. Simply put, the supercritical point of a fluid is the pressure and temperature point that above which there is no phase state change between a gas and a liquid. Conveniently, that means supercritical fluids have properties of both liquids and gases. Now why does this matter? Supercritical fluids, like those coming out of a nuclear reactor cooling system, have an added bonus of having the thick viscosity of a liquid, but can also expand like an elastic gas in a turbine Brayton cycle. When built right, testers having a motive fluid with the viscosity of a liquid means it will get an insane amount of torque even at low RPMs, and it wouldn't even need tight disc spaces because of the thickness of the supercritical fluid. Corollary, an elastic supercritical steam expanding in a tester via a Brayton thermodynamic cycle has a higher thermal efficiency than a typical steam ranking cycle because no energy must go to the latent heat of vaporization needed for the liquid water to change phase to the gaseous steam. Which is what limits the thermal efficiency of a normal steam ranking system in the first place. This thermal efficiency limit of steam ranking cycles is because of the latent heat of vaporization and condensation in the steam that is not usable for expansion to get mechanical energy out of the turbine shaft. Furthermore, on top of it not being useful for power out from the turbine, it still needs to be removed from the fluid in the condenser to reduce the pressure of the exhaust of the turbine. This makes the supercritical steam perhaps the best motive fluid for the tester. This is especially so for metallic discs as the conductive metals are usually naturally hydrophilic, meaning readily attractive to polar H2O molecules. This creates a good molecular adhesion and grip of the motor fluid to the disc faces, further reducing slip of the fluid on the discs and increasing torque 
in an efficient manner. Because the unique viscous and elastic properties of supercritical steam, the turbine will be able to generate an immense amount of torque, even at low RPMs, and do so not just with a high isentropic efficiency, but with a very high thermodynamic efficiency. Some might argue that all these benefits might be null if the tester isn't actually efficient, but here's my counter. Even if the tester wasn't the epitome of efficiency, the nuclear reactors on these ships have more fuel than the ship will use in its lifetime. When the objective is to be as quiet and stealthy as possible, efficiency takes a back seat. To put it in perspective, think about the afterburners in a fighter plane turbojet engine. They're not designed for efficiency with the prodigious amount of fuel they burn. They're designed for speed. To bring this back to nuclear-powered submarines, they care primarily about noise reduction. Traditional bladed turbines will always have some windage and vibration, requiring passive and active noise cancelling on the submersible vessel. The Tesla turbine, however, doesn't have these issues. So here's my bottom line. If they aren't already, Navy should be using Tesla turbines for direct propulsion as stealth trolling motors and auxiliary power units to power onboard electronics. <laughs> and as an added bonus, they should just go ahead and ditch all the bladed propellers and use the Tesla disc stack as water thrusters providing a quieter and smoother underwater propulsion system. In summary, when designed correctly, the Tesla turbine offers a revolutionary way to achieve both quiet and efficient operations, something I believe no bladed turbine or propeller could compete with.